Hi, I'm Paul Goddard, clinical hypnotherapist and master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming. This is a talk I did some years ago on communication and influence for nine networking. I like to add more to my NLP than what was just taught on me in the training I've read in books. And I like to use the test operate, test exit strategy to find out if things really do work that you're taught. I found two excellent resources, one Kevin Hogan on YouTube, Seven Magic Words, that I mentioned here and I wanted to really credit what he said. So I've also put a link in the description to Kevin Hogan's excellent video. The other person is Joe Navarro, which some of the body language tips and techniques from his program, The Power of Body Language, I've included here. Also, I include a link to one of his videos, so do check them out. If you like this audio video that I've made, then do like and subscribe to my channel. For more information about how NLP can help move your life forward, then go to www.paulgoddardnlp.co.uk. You can also like me on Facebook, Paul Goddard NLP and Hypnotherapy. Thank you for listening. Today I'm going to talk about communication. And with the communication, I'm also going to talk about influence. So in your businesses, when somebody comes in for your service or to have a sale from you, to increase your chances of them saying yes to you where they might have well said no before. But first of all, it's very important that you're genuine. It's important that you believe in your service. And that when somebody comes in, you just don't think when you see them, there's somebody I can sell to. Think to yourself, I like this person, I want to help this person. And that way, you'll be genuine. You won't be put on a fake smile. People pick up when people aren't being congruent because only 7% of what we actually say is the words. 38% is the tonality, and 55% is your physiology. Now, I'm sure we've all been in situations before now when somebody's, uh, you've seen somebody, and you say to them, how are you doing this morning? And they've got their arms folded, and they go, yeah, I'm fine. Even though they're saying, I'm fine, their physiology gives you a different clue, and also the way their tonality is as well. So first of all, seven magic words to help you increase your sales or people using you as a service. This is from Kevin Hogan, who's got a YouTube channel and written many books about influence, so I highly recommend that you take a look at him. So the very first magic word, when you were younger and you asked your parent, guardian, grandparent for some chocolate, you might say, may I have some chocolate? What did they say to you? What's the magic word? Please. Yes, so first one, please. It's always important to be polite to people you meet. When you receive the chocolate, what was the second magic word? Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So a person's name is very important. It's been shown over studies that when you use somebody's name, the rapport level goes up, more so than if you didn't use somebody's name when somebody comes in for your service. However, if you overuse the name, people will feel that they're being manipulated. You've probably been in a situation, you might have got a telesale call, and somebody saying to you, right, I'm going to use my name, Paul, I've got this fantastic deal for you. And Paul, are you getting excited? And Paul, do you know we're the best? And the Paul level goes way, way down, further than it would be if you didn't actually use the name at the beginning. So use the name at the beginning and at the end of the conversation. Now, this is a good one to use. Now comes from when we were very young and it's been installed with us, so we're conditioned to accept now. You might have been a young child and you were playing about on the carpet and the parent wanted you to do something but you wanted to continue on playing. And the parent would eventually say, now, to you. And then you knew with that tone of voice that trouble was on its way if you didn't actually stop doing what you were doing. And what I do using now, you could say if somebody phones you for your services or comes in for your service, when somebody phones me, I say to myself, shall I book you in? I always say, shall I book you in now? And that increases your chances of somebody actually booking with you. Because, again, similar to the now, people have been taught because from a very young age, you've been going next to the fire wanting to touch it. And the parent says, stay away from that fire because it is dangerous. It's also a cause and effect word. The football match was cancelled because of the flooded pitch. 
the train was late because of debris on the line. A study was done in the 1970s where a psychologist, she went and in a university got her uh, student to do an experiment where in the 1970s photocopiers were the only way you could get really copies of information. So there would be big queues to these photocopiers. So first of all, her job was to go in when there was a big queue and say, can I cut in line? I need to make some copies, like nobody else actually needed to make any copies. Surprisingly, 60% of people said, okay, and let her cut in line. However, when she said, can I cut in line because I need to make some copies, and adding in that because word, that actually rose up to 94%, just purely from using the because word. So you could say, you can book with us because our services are fantastic. Imagine... This is a great word. It's a non-confrontational word. It's not telling anybody to do anything. It's just telling you to imagine. And you could say to yourself, you could say to a customer that comes in, you know, imagine what it would be like having this wonderful kitchen fitted in your house. When I have clients, I always like to future pace them. So if it's to become more motivated, I get them to imagine than being in the future and it gives the brain thinking of the future before it's already happened so by throwing that word imagine that's very powerful oh and also as well in 96 the most popular car for sale was a mercury sable and their advertising slogan was imagine yourself in a mercury and they put the other word in now control words people like to feel as if they're in control so you can say to somebody, you've seen all the televisions here, which one do you want to go for? It's your choice. And I'm not using control, you're implanting that it's their choice, even though they've just seen uh, about three or four televisions, so they think they're choosing it, when in fact you're giving them a limited option. You can also do this with parenting. You could say to a child, you've been really good today, you can either go to bed at 8 o'clock or 8.30. Now it's your choice. The parent wants the child to go to bed at 8.30, but by giving those two options and saying it's your choice, the child will think they've chosen the time to go to bed. So that's words to use. How can you use your body language to help build that rapport with people? Preening yourself. This is very important. So when somebody comes to you for the first time, if, you just, if you're wearing a jacket, straighten it. If you've got a tie, straighten it a little bit. Just a very small movement, nothing that's going to be too obvious. There has been studies done and replicated several times where the experiment was just somebody going into a room and saying, can you fill out these forms, handing it over. Then the second person would come in and say, and straighten themselves just a little bit and say, can you fill in these forms. And then when asked afterwards which person they preferred talking to, people had no idea why, but they almost always said they preferred the one that preened themselves. It sends that subconscious signal to that person it goes under the radar you're important enough for me to make myself look good in front of you and standing up when greeting people that's very much the same now I know a lot of hotels where people have stood the entire time and I do feel a little sorry for them but when you stand up when somebody comes in that shows ultimate respect to that person and it makes them feel important if they're feeling important they're more likely to buy from you Head tilt. This shows that people are listening. I see some head tilts here, so that's really good. And it's good that when, if, if somebody gives you a lot of information exactly what they want, you've just got a little bit of head tilt. Now, again, be genuine because um, if, you, if you've got that head tilt and you're not listening to them, then you're not being genuine. But that person seeing your head tilt won't be thinking, they've got their head tilt, they're listening to me, but they'll be getting those subconscious clues, yes, this person is listening to me, I, they're understanding me, I like this person. Now, two button jackets, as opposed to three button jackets, why is this? The reason being is if you think back to, even people in history, all the archetypal villains in films, Quite often they'll be buttoned all the way up to the top, giving that signal saying that you know, they're closed, they're untouchable, they're a cold person. When you think of the heroes, quite often they'll be wearing a, a, a jacket that's opened. And what it's trying to emulate is the Greek heroes, quite often they would be uh, naked their chest or wear very little. 
And they would also be shaped like a V when you see some of the old sculptures of these Greek heroes, sort of creating that image of being open and having a, having a big heart. Now, politicians, some of you may think, try in vain to come across as open and honest. So they've actually been told, the politicians that are at Westminster, how to dress. And if you actually put on the Westminster Channel, you will see that none of them would be wearing a three-button jacket. It's always a two-button jacket. Now, I'm wearing a one-button jacket. I'm taking no chances today. <laughs> but I actually had a counsellor come on a training course that I was doing, and he was quite shocked because he was wearing a three-button jacket when he was doing his presentations to people. However, he was even more shocked after because my next point is people do not like brown suits and he was wearing a brown suit. <laughs> so he got rid of them. And it's, it's been shown that when they've had mock trials in America that people are less favourable to a person who's defending that's actually wearing a brown suit than other suits like a dark navy blue or a black suit. Establishing natural eye contact. This is good because if you're looking around, I've been to very young sales assistants that are kind of looking around whilst they're talking to you, and you begin to feel like you don't trust them because they're not giving you the natural eye contact. Of course, you don't want to be staring them out, but you know, being natural with it will make somebody feel comfortable in your presence. Hands. Hands are very important. The reason for this is asking for something with your palms down gives you a lot more authority. People, particularly if they're asking a boss for time off, will say, may I have some time off? And they upturn their hands. This is like a begging gesture. It would be much more powerful if you have your arms down when asked, palms down when asking for something. So if you're asking somebody for money, it's a, now would you like to pay us please with your palms down? But sometimes palms up can be good. So if you run a business and somebody's coming in, you can welcome them by opening your palms, and that makes somebody feel very positive towards you. Voice tone to use. Now, this is an embedded command with voice tone. I don't know if any of you noticed, but when I said, shall I book you in now, my voice went down at the end. I'm going to actually remove the now just to show you how this works. You could say to me, when most people say, shall I book you in, the voice will rise up at the end. And this is a, it seems more what people do when it's a question. However, if you say it and the voice goes down the end, so shall I book you in, it goes down. People won't think, oh, that sounds strange. It will come across to them more as a direction to be booked in than just it's your choice. So it increases your chances of them saying yes. And a direct command. Most people, if they wanted to meet somebody for coffee, they say, shall we go for a coffee? But you could use a direct command and say, let's go for a coffee. That's what's called a direct command. So in businesses, how would that work? Maybe somebody's come in and they're not sure with what figures to go, you know, to go through, whether they could afford it. You could say to them, let's go through the figures now. And they're more likely to go ahead and do those figures with you. And at the end of the day, review your day. How have you communicated with others? Don't beat yourself up if you could have done better. Just reach higher next time. And if you've done well, it's always good to congratulate yourself. So thank you for your time today.